Island. Are we starting? <laughs> That's a nice look. Hi, I'm ignoring you. Hi. <laughs> hey, everybody. It is Sunday. Sunday live haul. Awesome to see all you here hey, already. Woo -woo. I see a lot of action going on in the chat already. Uh, Cheryl, Cheryl Hinton said she's been taking pictures of the stuff she bought yesterday. So Pink Panther doesn't yell at her. Um, she's going to list up to show. Listen, I'm all about like being supportive, lifting people up, hopefully helping you get motivated. And sometimes and apparently that's what, I'm the one that shames you. Yes. And sometimes <laughs> that's what works for people. But occasionally there's people out there that I guess what works for them is to be horribly shamed, horribly shamed by horribly. Um, Victoria over here. So I guess if that's what works for you, uh, maybe we should start like a sign up of um, people where they can sign up to be um berated and um, what is it those people people that like abuse cheryl apparently you work under <laughs> abuse and pressure <laughs> yeah pretty much uh but hey welcome here and oh lord is here hooray lorna had plans and she wasn't gonna be able to make the show and then uh somebody um stood her up so we get her but i think that's super lame um but i'm glad to have you here and uh big drift says tough love as my parents would say mm -hmm. there you go that's it that's the kind of parent i am so uh as my daughter will absolutely tell anyone that listens mm -hmm. i was horrible mm -hmm. but oh rita rita says she had a scare today her brother had a heart attack but everything is okay well that's a big scare yeah that is super okay. scary so uh but yeah definitely glad to hear that you're that he's doing okay um is it lauren from lauren mcmillan from canada we have a lot of people from canada i feel like pretty awesome we like our friendly canadian neighbors yeah for sure anyway oh and i see sin city hustlers is in the house you guys check it out so we were at uh savers today and ran into sin city hustlers otherwise known as johnny but guess what? He didn't know it was going to happen, but his wife has actually reached out to us and wanted to like arrange for us to like, um, just like ooh, casually, just casually run, into run into him because I guess he's a big fan and, uh, but we've been chatting with him for a while. Um, and he's here in Henderson, uh, Nevada. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I posted a picture of my Instagram and he did too. Um, so super cool to run into him and talk to him. And it's kind of like a little precursor to, um, eBay open that's coming up because we're going to get to like meet a bunch of you guys. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm super excited about that. Getting to meet. I love meeting people that you get to know online through mm -hmm. this community. It's it's a it's a lot of fun. Like I've said before in, a, in another show, I have some eBay seller friends that I've been friends with for uh, I think about 13 years now that I met years ago on what was co called the old power sellers boards. Um, they were the discussion boards, the message boards that were on eBay. Somebody's old. I'm old. And uh, when I first started on eBay, that we we had uh, one big thread that's kind of like what you would call like a Facebook group, and and there were a group of us that kind of gravitated toward each other. And I think there are ten of us in our. It's a Facebook group now, but before Facebook existed, we migrated off of the eBay message boards and created our own uh, private discussion board back when those were a thing. You guys, they have a and, top yeah. secret Facebook group that has like ten people in it, and I'm not even in it. That's that's not cool, nope. man. But we've been friends for like you're, 13 you're years. You're an I am. We talk to each other almost every day. We've been with each other as friends through all the different parts of the country, uh, through like marriages and divorces and our kids growing up. And it's just, it's really great. I would, I consider this group of people like some of my closest friends. And we've really only seen each other in person like two or three times. And some of them I've never met in person. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, online friendships are no different than real friendships. So uh, beginning of news are coming cool. to meet us next year for sure. So you listen, guys, if you aren't doing it this year, start like putting a little money away, start saving up a little bit uh, for next year. Yeah, you can totally come. Um, and it's a lot of fun. And and you know what, we are really friendly people. Yeah. So if you do happen to come through Vegas, whether it's uh, hopefully at open, definitely come up and introduce yourself. Because again, like I've said before, like if you've got a picture of your cat or your grandkid on Facebook, I have no idea what you look like. Uh, so please come and say, yeah. Hey, this is my name or this is who I am. And you know how you know us or how you met us or want to meet us. Um, but please come and say hello. But if you come through town and you happen to be in Vegas, I mean, give us, a, you yeah, know, we live shout. here. We live here. So we'd just love to come and meet you for a cocktail drinks, or coffee whatever. or meet you at a thrift store and just hang out and meet you. I mean, that's, that's fun. I like doing that kind of stuff. So yeah, um, for sure. It's a vacation destination. So people come through here a lot, whether you're here for open or not. So yeah, absolutely. Tickets here are cheap guys. So anytime mm -hmm. you want to come hang out, we'll be around. Uh, Patricia Hopkins says that um, she's watching from Eastern Oregon. It is flipping hot out. 
Patricia, what part of Eastern Oregon are you from? Are you in right now? Because I'm from Oregon, if you didn't know that. Um, I just moved here in December. So I'm actually from like the Salem, kind of Portland area, Willamette Valley. Um, and uh, it's pretty hot here. And actually, it's quite, it's it's like kind of was it monsoon season. Yeah, it's, 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 it literally is. It's monsoon season. So right now, it's actually a little overcast and really windy. And I just heard some thunder about 20 minutes ago. So I'm pretty sure it's going to start pouring really hard. Mm -hmm. uh, this week last year, we had about two inches of a hail. So we get some crazy storms that happen in July in Vegas. So it's kind of interesting in the high desert. Yeah. Uh oh. I think Gretchen is on to me. She said that Katie may be positive, but she loves to stir the pot for you, Vicky. That's true. <laughs> She's poly positive, and I am, I don't know, Nelly negative? No, I'm not really negative, but I uh, i definitely get stirred up and worked up more than she does. She's a way more calm person than I am. Yes. Uh, G Jasso, yes, I am wearing pants right now, unfortunately. We actually went out this morning and did some thrifting and stuff. And um, I don't let her go out in public with no pants on. Now she is leaving town for 10 days on Thursday. And I told her she cannot tell me when and where I have to wear pants. Um, she seems to think I need to put pants on to go out and get the mail. I don't agree. The mail is a block down the street. It's not like it's in the front yard. We don't have who, mailboxes here. Who am I trying to impress guys? Come on. <laughs> Come on, what's the deal? We don't have mailboxes at our houses. That yeah. there's there's like a centralized mailbox a couple places on the street. She's got to walk like six houses down. You can't walk six yeah. houses down with no pants on. Well, all I know is that when I did, when I sat down to start the show, I realized it's too late that I should have taken my pants off because I'm gonna be hot. Whew. Good lord. Good. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Anyway. Oh, we have. Uh, I do have a, a boss up shout out uh, to give. Um, Tracy Coppin Segal. I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right, but um, she was excited because she got top rated seller back after nine months. So I don't know what happened. Maybe she got had some late shipments. Who knows? Mm -hmm. People lose their top rated seller status all the time, and she's been working to get herself back into it. And after nine months, she's back. So congrats, Tracy. Good work. And I know some people will be like, "Who really cares about?" Top rate seller now. Blah, blah, I only get ten percent discount. Man, blah, blah. Um, now I got to do uh, free returns in order to get my ten percent. But like I've said before, I don't know what that voice is. Me, me. Uh, but, but but here's the thing, guys. I've said this before. What it really comes down to is the requirements that eBay gives us for top rated seller. It's really kind of like their roadmap. Um, it's their, it's how they signal to us, like, here are the things that we prioritize. And it's really about the best practices. And when you do follow um, those requirements in order to get to be top rated seller, overall, you are going to get more sales. You're going to be seen more in the search. Um, right. You're going to be giving better customer service. Uh, you're going to be having better listings that just look better than other people's listings. And I'm telling you, it equates you, to more money in your pocket, all of it. So really what top rate seller means is like, yeah, you get to have it in your listing that you're top rate seller. Like, that's great. But overall, it's going to equate to more sales and you're going to be making more money. So mm, I still say it's a good thing. And Tracy, shout out to you. Good job on getting back to that. Uh, Yay. Yeah. Uh, Pamela uh, Sabin says she got her second sale without doing GPS shipping. So nice. yay, GSP shipping. But yeah, same thing. Um, yeah, good. More yep. money in your pocket. Good for you. Yep. And Patricia says that she only has only had two returns so far since um, uh, doing the free returns and she sells clothes. Yeah, you know, I mean, you've gotten more than I have, but like we, we I have, but it was really like I said, it was a big rash of returns at first, and now it's not any more than I would have normally had. So I mean. Yeah, at first, I think I had like 10 or 12 that first month, and I was like, oh, crap, this is mm -hmm. not going to work for me. Um, but then it, it slowed down to normal. I think I've gotten a few more because of it that I may not have gotten before because uh, people would weigh whether it was worth sending it back and not getting, yeah. you know, having to pay for their own shipping. But to be fair, uh, again, I'm still ahead as far as the top rated plus yeah, totally. you know, discount, even even though it's only the 10%. So. If you want to play by eBay's rules, then the way you're going to get seen the most, the way your listings are going to get pushed up to the top of the search is that you follow that. Which, you know, Laura Bale says, is top rated still worth it? Or do you need top rated seller plus to get any perks? Okay, so again, what I was saying is now in order to get top rated seller plus, you have to do the free returns. And that's where the, the, the perk of your 10% discount comes in. But what I'm saying is that 10% discount, it's nice. It's not a crazy amount of money. And it should not that 10% discount should not be what is motivating you to be a top, do top rated seller right, plus. Right. What should be motivating you is that they are giving you 
clear instructions on what they want you to be doing as a seller in order to get the highest possible um, spot in the search. And so if you're selling on eBay, if you want your sales to be the best that they can possibly be, you want to follow all those requirements because it is going to get you the most exposure. Um, and like we've said, yes, we've gotten some more returns by doing free returns. However, it's, it has not outweighed that 10% discount. So really it's, it's very minimal as far as like, it's not costing you any more. Um, for the most part, of course, it depends on like what it is that you're selling. Um, but it's not going to be costing you any more and it's going to be giving you more sales compared to other sellers on eBay, because the sellers who don't have free returns are going to be lower in the search results overall. Now there's a lot of different factors. So, you know, don't go out there and do a search and be like, well, this person doesn't do free returns and their thing came up higher than mine. There's a lot of other factors that go into it, like price, um, free shipping, uh, your feedback score does actually weigh into it. Um, how many, um, uh, like, described returns you've got there's a million things that are going to affect your search it's just all of them add up to you being um coming up as high as possible so yeah um somebody was asking are you going to do any live video from ebay open yes I, yes absolutely i figure that out because um i only have a a little chromebook thing i don't know how well it's going to do for live video as far as being mobile if not your phone um, but the phone is really everybody mm -hmm. every time someone tries to do facebook live it pretty much craps yeah. out. I might, I, I might have to convince her to let me use her laptop. But I don't know. Let me see. <laughs> you see that face? We'll talk about it privately, guys. Lee, 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 Lee. Um, I don't know. It depends on. Uh, I think part of it is going to depend on uh, what the reception is like in the convention center at Mandalay Bay, because I have found that the convention centers in general um, don't have the best reception. So that might be part of the issue too. But there will definitely be some stuff done. If not live, it would definitely be recorded mm -hmm. and then posted, you know, maybe uploaded every night or every afternoon or something like that. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. For a beginner, what to start selling? Stuff that's in your house. Yep. Sell start, your own stuff. <clears throat> start with the stuff that's in your house. You're going to get, uh, you're not spending any money that way. I'm sure you have plenty of stuff around your house, clothing um different media books music uh different hard goods um stuffed animals you're gonna have like a million things in your house that you could try selling you and it may kids your kids clothes because we all know kids out yeah. clothes doesn't matter if they're um even like you sell them as play clothes if yeah. they've got some wear on them you can sell them in a lot and, um, and maybe you don't have anything that's like that valuable but here's the thing it's all about learning because you know when you first get into it you're gonna be like you need to learn like about shipping. You need to learn about just creating listings in general and just going through that process. And it's better to learn the stuff that you already have. And then you're going to get a feel for like, oh man, I really hate listing clothes or I really hate listing hard goods or I or really, pants. yeah. Or like me, I really hate listing pants um, or I don't like listing um, CDs or whatever it is. You're, or you're going to be like, you know what? I really have a lot of fun listing stuffed animals. So you're going to kind of learn that's honestly, that's the best way to do it. And then at the same time, be doing lots of research, you know, paying attention to um, what other stuff is selling on eBay, just pick random categories you might be interested in, look at the sold, sort by highest to lowest, and just kind of start to get an idea of what sells and Not what doesn't. <laughs> Ramble much? Oh, I can't you tease you. you. I can't yeah. tease you. You can tease me. <laughs> My stink eye was so long that uh, that that Dana was able to comment on it. And I, I know. saw her comment in the delay. <laughs> All right. Wow. So uh, okay. Karen was saying, buy a vintage camcorder for eBay Open. We both have great cameras. It's not the camera issue. It's the yeah. it's a live issue. Whether there's yeah, enough, doing uh, live. another enough uh, to do a feed live. I um, mean, I can do live on my phone, of course. I can do live on my phone. That's it's the just, one that breaks up. It's a lot. not, and it's and it's not as easy. It's nice to be able to be uh, be able to see the chat and interact with people. Um, I will have like my regular camera with me, so I I can do plenty of videos that I'll be able to post like the night uh, like every night. But I would like to do some live stuff. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, get, Dorothy says I need to get you a shock collar for when she rambles. All right, she'd be shocked frequently. She would probably build up an immunity to the shock or she'd be walking around like this twitching all the time. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> She's a rambler. All right, Wait, are we going to move on a little bit or are we going to ask? I questions? guess so. Somebody thinks they're in charge now, guys. What's going on here, huh? You're rambling. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and do uh, our solds for the week. We've got a bunch of stuffs that we sold. 
And let me share, hold on a second, let me close that screen. We'll go right to here. Go ahead, share, and let's see the first thing that Victoria sold. What you got? What you got? Uh, this was a Savers Buy. I bought it a few months ago anyway. I think it's been listed for a few months. So just a Diane, Diane von Furstenberg. It's not um, the traditional wrap dress. That uh, is kind of her signature series of, of clothing. They tend to sell a little bit better. So this is kind of like a faux wrap dress. It's a little bit different. Um, but this sold, I took a best offer on this. I sold it for 60. I paid $7 for it. So um, nice. I think that's a name that a lot of people are familiar with. Um, and she makes beautiful dresses. She makes things other than dresses, but her dresses and her uh, wrap dresses are what tends to sell the best. So mm -hmm. uh, beginning of news is even rambling. We're her favorites. So <laughs> well, good. Whatever. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Uh, all right. So my first thing I have is uh, you probably remember me showing this maybe a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. This is a Woolrich. Oh, yeah. Hunting shirt. I actually took an offer for forty dollars on this. Um, it's just a vintage uh, Woolrich, crazy bright orange hunting camouflage made in the U.S. Um, I usually don't buy much um, button-down stuff, but Woolrich or like Pendleton, anything used with those, I will generally pick up. Um, so yeah, I took an offer for forty. My sales weren't going so great, so I was like, forty bucks. I'll take it. Give me your money. Let's go. I'm going to answer a quick question because she's asked it a couple of times because the questions have been going fast. I'm sorry. I don't know if it's a he or she one heck of a thrifter. Uh, the questions are going fast. Uh, did I ever sell those Tommy Hilfiger pants yet? Uh, no, I haven't. I did just list them about, I don't know, like 10 days ago or so. And I have them listed super high. Mm -hmm. So they're a new listing. I do have best offer on them. Um, but I am not able to run any sales on them because they're a new listing. So I, I think that might, um, hold back, but they are also women's and they're a small size. So I think it's going to take a bit to find the the right buyer for them, but they've been listed for about 10 days. Yeah. All right. Here's another one that you showed recently. Yeah, I did show this recently and I thought I was going to be able to get a little bit more for it. So I did list it for around a hundred dollars, but once I um, took a look at it, there were really some condition issues on it. It's not you know, like it's got a big dent on one side. There's some rust on the inside and the outside. I mean, it took some pretty clear photos. It's not, not fantastic. It is a trash can but it's not fantastic. So what I did, I did take a, an offer for $55 on it because it was just going next door to California and it only cost me $8 to ship it. Oh, nice. I yeah, paid, that could have been a lot. Yeah, I paid $3 for it. So it's not a big deal because it's really uh, big. That's not a small trash can. It's about 20 inches tall. So that's pretty high. Um, nice. Yeah. All right, my next one is this Tuffy Jack Horus uh, small uniform. It's like a like a cop jacket. Mm, I have a couple of those listed, mm -hmm. different colors. I don't remember when I how long I've had this one, but it sold for one thirty two, sold for nice. asking price. Um, That's a high price it. on those on that. Yeah, I, I think I've had it for I don't know a few. It's been up for like a few months, not a crazy long time, but um yeah these are this one's like a really nice one and it's got the um i think it's the color that's different i've yeah, seen it's like black cool... and navy a lot i've never seen one in that color oh that oh, yeah, this one I, even I had... fixed that one for oh you. yeah you did this one even had like a little split there so i had like a little repair my terrible st uh, sewing skills but it was better than a whole so see i even like i i disclosed this in the listing and i still got 132 dollars for it so don't be afraid to price stuff high even if it has like a little damage um somebody else can probably go in and and uh, do like a machine stitch on that if they wanted to but yeah these yeah things, that's why i kind of left it a little bit of a loose stitch so it wouldn't damage if they mm -hmm. needed to stitch rip it and do it better yep but it's really nice and it's got the faux fur collar and everything so mm -hmm. all right good and sale next one for you okay so these were uh, a pair of sneakers that i actually got out of a, a storage locker um i've had them for like over a year um almost two years even i think um, so these came out of a storage locker. These are uh, vintage, or they call them OG, because they're like early 2000 um, Reebok. Are they Reeboks? Yeah. Reebok OG means just like original line, because they've done a lot of revamps of, of these. These are Reebok? Piece. They're like some weird. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. It's DMX. Black top. I've, yeah, never, I've never seen it before. Anyway, they're, they're like from like 2000 or 1999. So uh, <clears throat> anyway, it's uh, I took an offer on these, and I sold them for 70 um, these and I've never, shoes. they are ugly and like, I, I had no money invested in them. So mm -hmm. yeah. So I did take an order, offer. This has been a really slow week for me guys. So like last week I had a fantastic week, even in the middle of Glitchapalooza. And then this week has, I, I've dropped by 50% from last week. So 
it happens. The summer slowdown hits people at different times. Yep. And to be fair, I have not listed as much this week as I normally do. Mm -mm. <clears throat> All right. So. All right. So, Karen says, I just bought from Goodwill an LA Lakers trash can. Nice. I'm just going to shine up and list it. Good girl. Official stamped. Yeah, they're all stamped and this is okay so okay one heck of a thrifter is a she thank you sometimes i can't tell because obviously these little icons that you have next to your name if you they're have so one, tiny uh, it's super small so i can't see the photo i'm blind as a bat and it's three feet away from me on the screen mm -hmm. um but also if you have like a you know a, a, a screen name i can't tell if you're a boy or a girl so mm -hmm. anyway yeah patricia says she's from ontario ontario oregon and thrifting sucks here no Guess you gotta do some thrifting trips then. Uh, Karen, how did I mail my trash can? Um, I basically bubble wrapped it and then I Franken boxed. Yeah. So, so just built a box around it. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to uh, do what you're talking about. You could do, you could bubble wrap it and then maybe shrink wrap all the way around it. And that would probably be fine. But I, because it's kind of a thin metal, I was afraid that somebody would like you get crushed. put something heavy on it and they would dent the crap yeah. out of it more so than it already was. Mm -hmm. All right. Next one I have, um, this is another one guys where I had to take a return a while back. I sold this for, so this, this time I took an offer for $130. Um, but I sold this eh, a few weeks ago for a hundred dollars and it got returned and it was, you know, free return. And so, um, I sold it again for a hundred and actually $129 to Canada. So it more than covered, um, the cost of me having to ship it out originally and then pay for shipping back for the free return. And then this time it went to Canada. So they paid for the shipping. Plus it was sold for $30 more than it did the first time around. So, um, you know, just to say like, you know, don't worry about, um, those, when you're doing stuff like free returns, quit focusing on the transactional level of it. Um, when you get a return, uh, and just know in the bigger picture, a lot of times you're just going to sell it for more than you did the first time around. So mm -hmm. don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. All right. One of the questions there is, uh, we both have nice pictures. What setup, especially lighting do you use? Is it possible to a future show on it? Uh, we can send, uh, we can do a post inside the boss group. I don't think we necessarily need a full show, mm -hmm. but um, I'd be happy to put a post inside the boss group, boss Facebook group. It's uh, the link is on the bottom of this show. If you're not in there, get in there. Um, there's a lot of learning, but we can definitely put a post up there about the type of lighting that we use it's nothing nothing fantastic and nothing super expensive so just daylight bulbs for sure yeah. that's that's it's all about daylight thing. bulbs and having a good setup and, and also it's using a good camera um or in my case well both of us use our phones phones or camera we both yeah we yep. both use both all right so anyway um this was a good sale i actually paid up for this shirt a little bit i bought it at uh buffalo exchange i think didn't you show this in one of the i shows? did i showed okay. it in one of the shows but I, i'm pretty sure i paid 20 dollars for it if i can't if i can remember correctly but it's a vintage 70s levi's it was so crisp and clean it was almost uh, it, i think it might have been new um i think i did put that it has no signs of wear or use there are no tags but i couldn't tell um of any use and it had this really cool painting on the back of, of a kachina doll and so yeah, yeah i uh, really cool. it was really nice and it sold for i took an offer for 120 i was happy with that that's crazy one of the highest sale prices if not the highest on um a 70s uh, levi's button down shirt so uh gladly me this is amazing watched another video earlier where they were selling jerseys like that for five dollars listen there's all kinds of different jerseys and i am not at all an expert in them so anytime i come across a jersey um if it's a sewn jersey like i know for sure that like if it's sewn obviously it's better than like um a screen printed or whatever or like the iron on um but i always like will look it up because you just never know in fact uh, victoria bought three jerseys yesterday she went out um thrifting on her own bought three jerseys they all like look like they're great jerseys they're sewn jerseys but once you look them up and you see the, either the team or the player or the brand or whatever. Let's just say they're not in my haul video today. Yeah. I mean, they're good. I'll make my money back on them and then some, but not nothing fantastic. I thought I got great scores. I was like, and they priced them really too low. I thought, and I was like, no, actually they really didn't price them too low. Yeah. You just got to do your research guys. Um, and don't be afraid to ask for a lot. So if you think you can get it, Karen asked with international shipping, they always pay shipping. Yes. Yes, they do. Um, mm -hmm. even if it's free shipping domestically. Yeah you're going to put in calculated shipping for international sales. So yep. we love our international buyers. Yep. And if you do free returns, you can set it up. So it's free returns domestically, but uh, international buyers still have to pay mm -hmm. return shipping if they have a remorse um, return. 
Okay, so next one for me, I think I showed this one in a haul a few weeks ago as well. I'm pretty sure um, this is a Polo Ralph Lauren uh, men's wool cardigan is that sweater. Label? Is it what? No. Oh, I thought it was purple uh, label. It's not purple. Oh, no, you just didn't. Okay. Um, anyway, and this is like a nice tartan plaid shawl collar cardigan, really heavy. Um, and I actually took an offer for this for $130. So I got a great price on that. And I was super stoked about it. Um, that's a great price for a sweater. Wow. Uh, but yeah, but for these, for the, I mean, I, I didn't just like make that price up. So, um, these particular kinds, like these older ones that are like this, yeah, really the, the shawl collar. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the tartan plaid is a really popular look. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's like, but again, I probably sweater. asked for more than a lot of other people were asking and, um, got a good price for it. So grandpa sweater. Yeah. Kind of. Mm -hmm. All right. Back to the back to the more um, from the Barbie, the Barbie hall, hall, the Rhode Island Barbie Hall. Um, uh, most of my bigger Barbie items have sold. Uh, this sold today, the other day, for uh, the price that was there. So one sixteen and change. It was on sale. Those little gas cans. I know they're so cute. But this Barbie stuff, um, I I've almost doubled my money on it so far, and I still have a bunch left. But um, it's been good, and I'm asking higher prices than almost everyone else. Mm -hmm. So, um, this particular one was like, I sold for one sixteen. it was free shipping and it's, even though it's a larger box, it's super light. So it was like five pounds total ended up shipping for like 12 bucks. Mm -hmm. Very cool. <laughs> All right, guys. So as you know, I have been really um, working on listing on Etsy as well as eBay. And, uh, you know, I'd listed a bunch um, when I started it like a year ago and I think I got to like 80 or hundred items in my store and I was getting semi-regular, pretty regular sales there. Um, and then I just stopped adding any listings. And like, I think the last thing I sold was a couple of weeks ago, like a t-shirt for $30. Um, but, uh, just in the last, like over the last like week or so, um, I've really been, uh, buckling down and every single day adding listings to my Etsy store. And so I've had my first sale since I started doing that. And this is actually something that I showed you guys here, um, in a hall, like a few weeks ago, this, uh, Syracuse, I think it was last week. Was it last week? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was like the Syracuse university. It's like a vintage eighties kind of Jersey shirt. And it has, um, sorry, I can't get a bigger picture on this, but it has a uh, Snoopy. It's like the peanuts gang Snoopy on it. Um, I think it shows like football. I think it's lacrosse and uh, basketball on it. I sold it for $80 plus shipping. So they, they paid like 84 something and it just sold yesterday. So heck yeah, I will take that. So mm -hmm. that really helps with my sales for this week. Um, also I wanted to point it out. I think somebody made a post about this in the boss group um, earlier this week about FlipperTools.com. Now I don't personally know anything. I don't know anything about Flipper Tools. They're not a sponsor um, or anything like they're that. They're not a sponsor, so. but I just I happened to use them because somebody had posted something. I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was. I posted. Apologize to you, whoever it was. Um, but uh, I just remembered, like, oh yeah, somebody posted that and said you can look up Etsy sold prices on there. So I went and I wanted to be able to show you guys what the sold for. Um, I couldn't show like my my shipping screen because it had like the buyer's name and everything on it. Um, so I went and found the Flipper Tools page and it's completely free. You put in your, uh, you put in the, the URL, as you can see right here for your listing. And then it shows that it sold for $79.99 plus shipping. Um, and then you can actually do it. I went ahead and opened this up so I could show you guys. Um, you can also see eBay. You can see, um, you know, when somebody does like a best offer, it won't show, you won't see the actual sale price. You'll see like, there'll be like a line mark through it. Or as you can see from here, I'll even show you. So remember I said this Woolrich uh, shirt sold for 40 best offer. But when you look at the sold page, it just says 59.99. Right. So of course, a couple of mine are like that too. Like I know what I sold. I took off right. And when you're so. looking at sold, you'll see it'll be a green number, but it'll have a line through it. So, you know, it didn't actually sell for that price. Um, so let me just go ahead and show you, you just copy uh, that number, um, your item number, and you go over here and you just put it in and you hit, okay. Um, Bam, it shows right there, sold for $40. Uh, so I just wanted to like show that to you guys. Again, I don't know anything about flipper tools, but whatever, I don't mind. Um, I'm assuming that it was created by a reseller just yeah. based on some of the little stuff I've seen. This is the first time I've looked at it, actually. I've never even looked yeah, at it. Yeah, and, and, so. and I don't mind showing something like this where it's like, I'm not asking you guys to spend money on it. It's totally free, so you might as well check it out. Yeah. Um, so just a free way for you guys to, to kind of do a little bit better research on pricing and stuff like that. Actually, it looks like, I don't know what the reseller six pack is, but it looks like there's going to be uh, some video tonight where they're 
you can like find out more information about, but whatever. Okay. Anyway, that's it. Let me get out of the screen share here. Bam. Hey guys, what's up? What's happening? Hello, you How's see our, our shiny faces all over <laughs> again. Every time I look at this on the screen, I'm like, wow, we always look really shiny, but we're not. I promise you. It's not even really hot right now. It's kind of. Okay. Yeah, whatever. I just before every show, what I like to do. I don't I, powder I, myself before the shows. Okay, listen, I'm gonna give you a little behind the scenes. Uh, just before a show, what I do is I like to get out an old pork chop from the fridge, <laughs> and I take it and I actually rub it on my face, and I find it gives me like a more moisturized a nice look. shine. A sheen. Yeah, like I like a good sheen. We use some um, butter, and I feel like I'm being really thoughtful and considerate of my um, my co-host here because it smells great. It just smells really great. It's gross. It's so you know? gross. <laughs> it's so gross. Yeah, we were just talking though about how like the lighting in here is really terrible because this office doesn't actually have like overhead lighting. And so I just have this window over here, which even when the blinds are shut, there's still like this kind of crazy glare. Um so it's like all I have we is. We actually had somebody complain about the glare as at a comment. Well, I get it though, because it is kind of it is kind of bright so. right here. Um so I really need to to invest in like some like you can get those ring lights or whatever, um, so that this show actually looks like a little bit better, but yeah. Anyway, anyway, guys, shiny, happy people. Shiny, yes. We are shiny, happy it's people. True. Yeah, true. for sure. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and get into our haul. looks like we've got, wow, we've got like 120 people watching right now. Whoop, 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 whoop. Slow Sunday peeps. Slow Sunday. Whatever. We're awesome. Kidding, we're I'm fun. Kidding. We're super fun. I'm Come kidding. on. It's nice. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for taking time out of your weekend to do this. Yeah, for I sure. I appreciate it. Uh, we both did really well, like found some really cool stuff this week. Like we didn't like source a ton, but we did really well. I thought we um, sourced, uh, twice, three times. Well, I did three times. You did once, twice. Cause uh, I did twice. And then I also we went got, out together Friday night. That's our date night. We went sourcing. It's just pretty sad. I have a sad date night. <laughs> I know we also got another box of stuff from Allison from big drift thrift. Did you put your, your, that one item in your haul to show off or no? No, which one? The blanket. Oh no, the blanket. Sorry, I didn't. Rude, actually. rude. Here's the thing. Uh, you did it the other day, you did an unboxing video. I did. I did. It. I have a couple things. So anyway, Allison did send another box of goodies, and um, one of them I will be posting. I did like an unboxing video, and I'm actually going to post it after the show. Um, uh, so there's some really, really, really cool stuff, and so you'll see um, the stuff that she said. I have a couple of things that I will show here. Um, I think if I have some time and then there were a couple things that you got, including, a I didn't blanket. bring anything up. I'm sorry. I will go get stuff though. Rude. If, Rude. We have time. if we have time. Rude. All right. Go ahead. You want me to start? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So, um, I've mentioned before that I'm a camp counselor at children's camp, right? So that's where I'm going for 10 days. I'm leaving on Thursday. So I will miss you guys next week. She's going to be doing this, uh, by herself or have someone on. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Maybe there'll be some surprise guests. Maybe there will be surprise know. guests. So anyway, we have a uh, theme days at camp. Like every day we have a theme day. It's kind of a dress up day. So one of the theme days is like an Indiana Jones safari day. Right? So of course I thrift most of my stuff for my, uh, my costumes. So one of the things I was looking for is like a safari hat, right? You know, so you have these ha cheapo hats hanging up on the wall everywhere. And I was like, oh, I'm going to grab this. It was $5.99. I had my 20% off coupon. Well, little did I know that this particular hat is a brand. It's called the Tilly Hat. I'd never heard of it before. I may or may not be taking this to camp because apparently this $5.99 hat is worth about 80 bucks. Used. It's crazy. So this is my new safari hat very attractive i know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's worth 80 bucks so i'm pretty happy with that one that is crazy uh gretchen just said my daughters went to clean dog poop without being asked i wonder what they did and or felt guilty about what do they want <laughs> that's usually what i would think as a mom that's, what do they want yeah maybe they didn't do anything but maybe they are going to ask you for something soon so there yeah so i'd never heard of this brand so it's just for me it was a, a surprise a, a help happy surprise so i'm happy to uh you know share my new knowledge with you there you go it's very unattractive hat but hey indiana jones ish <laughs> what, what? wait big fish in the house big derek yamamoto house. derek yamamoto i don't know why i just went into the robot there but yeah so yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with it with this hat i will probably still take it to camp and use it i'll just bring it back and sell it after it's not new so samantha says that she sold a silly hat it had ear flaps and sold for 70 dollars whoa wait what that's over 70. And then Lorna said she sold a Tilly jacket for $180. Great Canadian I did not brand. not find the jacket. 
Yeah. But I mean, I probably would have looked it up if I had seen it in a jacket. As far as hats go, I just never assumed that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm kind of psyched about it. It was a good one. Very cool. Do you want me to do one more and then you can yeah, do, do one, one more. more? Okay. So I did go thrifting without Katie um, yesterday while she was hiking mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, I have asthma. I'm not hiking. Yeah. I have asthma and I'm fat. She was depressed. Both that. of those things have not hiked. She was depressed that I was leaving her alone. So she had to go do thrifting to get her revenge. Yeah. And she so, did get her revenge, guys. I did. Well, this was in the men's department, um, but it's a women's jacket. So I got a racing jacket. This is very much a Katie thing. She would have gotten this before me mm -hmm. normally, but it's really cool. It's just a Dale, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. jacket. And it's a woman's jacket, though. It's, so it's buttoned like a men's, but want, tell them why, why you think it's a woman's Well, jacket. I think it's a women's based on the cut. So yeah. if you look at it, you can see that it curves in and it's fitted. It's also a size medium. It curves right here. So you guys, guys. And it's a little bit, it, it's snug on me. If it were a men's medium, it would fit me because I would I wear a women's large usually. Um, so yeah, from... So it was $17.99, but the ones that are similar to this that are men's sell for around 100 or so. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask 100 Yeah. Beth wants to know if you perspire, will, will your hair color come off in the headband inside the hat? No. Um, excuse me. She's a lady. <laughs> she does not perspire. She said perspire. She didn't say sweat. I, I know. I said I, you don't perspire I sparkle. either. I sparkle. No, I don't. Did she never, uh, no, my hair does not. She never uh, farts either. My, I don't. Ever. My hair does not bleed. Um, only like if it's just recently dyed, it will on like, um, for like the first couple of washes, but it doesn't. <laughs> Karma putting it in Katie's face. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's my turn. Yeah. All right. So let's see. I got a couple of things from today. Um, some of these kind of, we're going to see how this goes. We're going to see what happens with this. This is a soft shell jacket. This one is from Stanford. It's very specific. It's Stanford. Graduate School of Business Executive Education. Now that's that's a pretty specific thing going on there, but it is Stanford. Um, this is a soft shell jacket. It's a pretty nice quality. I don't know what brand it is. Storm Creek. Um, priced at ten ninety nine. I got twenty percent off of that. It's a good size. It's a it's men's large. Um, I'm gonna try to sell this, and I think I feel like I can sell it for at least forty dollars. So let's just see how that goes. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there's going to be some guy out there who dropped out of school and he wants to impress his family. He's going to be like, hey, guys, look at me. I go to Stanford School of Business. I'm going to help him do that, guys. I'm going to help him out because I want his $40. You're going to help, you're going to help him lie. He'll wear his, the jacket as a pickup jacket. I go to Stanford. I don't know. But seriously, it's weird stuff like this does sell. So I was excited. Uh, I got a couple of cool vintage sweatshirts. Um, this one, they're both high school ones. This one is uh, BHS. Panthers. Okay, yeah. Let's see, the jacket is not <laughs> soft. And uh, so this is jerseys, definitely '90s. You can see that's the jerseys tag, made in the U.S. Um, this says it's a 3XL. Yeah, I'm having my doubts there, guys. But it's a nice, it's a nice size. But I don't think it's 3XL. I might have to. Well, it that. might have been 3XL in the '80s. Yeah, might sizes have, have definitely gotten more generous, shall yeah. we say? Yeah. But this is uh, $6.99 and I got it for 20% off. I just like, I like the graphic on it. I think it's cool. See, um, that's the kind of stuff I never buy that I think is so weird that you get like this weird brand specific or team specific, like high school stuff. I'm like, who's buying that? They do. People buy it, guys. Like the annual dad's car 5K race from Milwaukee. She'll get a t-shirt. I'll be like, who the hell's buying that crap? Yeah. But people do. I don't know. People do buy it. Uh, here's another high school one, but this is a um, champion vintage 90s. Um, is this one actually made? Yeah, this one's made in the U.S. Uh, reverse weave sweatshirt. And Again, so something I've never found in the wild. I find them somewhat regularly. So the, the, the price on this is crazy, $4.49, and I paid 20% um, off of that. But reverse weave, this is Burlingale, no, Burlingame football. It's a high school. Um, but let me tell you what the reverse weave. First of all, let me show you here. This is what the tag looks like. And it actually says reverse weave on it. Um, and so what the reverse weave is, as you can see, hold on, lady. I, was trying to help I know. You can see right here, if you look up close, you can see the, the, the weave is horizontal. And then if you look at the side, there's like a side panel here. Um, and then there it is vertical. The weave here is vertical. And so that's why it's called a reverse weave. And these are super popular, um, 90s vintage. Go look at uh, Champion Reverse Weave Vintage Sweatshirt 
do solds and look at high to low and you'll see obviously like some of the colleges and stuff like that are going to get higher prices. Mm -hmm. um, but I should still be able to get 40 bucks for this 40, 50 bucks, even though it's a high, I think even though it's a high school team, whatever. It's a nice red. It's beautiful. I love it. It's a good oh, vintage size. champion. You're kidding me. When in the nineties, late eighties, early nineties, that was the coolest thing in the world to have. Yeah. And nobody in my house was buying me a champion. They were like 40 bucks. That was a lot of money for a sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. My mind was like, I'm not buying you a $40 sweatshirt. You're on crack. Yeah. You get the, so, the sweet little. When I was in high school, like, I would have really liked to have a sweatshirt like that. Yep. With my turtleneck underneath, kind of like scrunched down. That was the cool. Oh, look. yeah. Would you have your hair on the side, maybe? No, I had big hair. <laughs> big. <laughs> we'll have to do throwback pictures someday, but yeah, I had big hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Throwback pictures. I've got big 80s ones. and 90s hair. That was a mm -hmm. big thing in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. East Coast girls. We had big hair, chewed a lot of gum, lots of makeup. All right, next up, next. You got does she? She got like a ridiculous. I swear, like the second we talk about like uh, thrifting shoes, you keep buying more. So, mm -hmm. how many pairs of shoes did you find this week? Like you're only showing a few right now. I got about twelve pairs of shoes this week, but they're all really good. Um, like I'm not buying twenty, thirty dollar pair of shoes. I'm buying sixty and up, or I'm not mm -hmm. buying. Uh, Dorothy says she had a fro. Here's the thing. I actually have, I have curly hair too. I so. have very curly hair naturally. Like when my hair, when I was a little kid, um, I was really little. I had like long hair and I had like the Shirley Temple curls and my hair still, if I grew it out long, it starts, it curls like that. Um, but for some reason, when I was about 11 years old or 12, I decided I needed Joey McIntyre hair. So instead of, I guess, being in love with Joey McIntyre, I wanted to be him. And so I cut my hair short, got the perm on top, even though I already got the curly hair, guys. It's a little ridiculous. Yeah, my hair is not as curly as as Dorothy's. Even with your dreads, I can tell that you have curly hair. But I do have curly hair, but it's not nice curls. It's frizz curls. So I tend to straighten it. Um, yeah. Blow it out straight. But I had curly hair, and it was teased and ratted. And, like, I had that lion's mane hair, like, out here with, like, the – made with Aquanet and a teasing comb. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. <laughs> Jerry wants to know if, Majestic. I have, if I'm wearing a Pendleton hat. No, it's, uh, I don't know if it's pronounced Wesk. It's W-E-S-C. We are the superlative conspiracy. It's like a, it's a Stockholm, Sweden. It's like that. It's just kind of like a streetwear brand, but they, I got it at like um, Marshall's, I think. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Unfortunately, we can't really show pictures on uh, on YouTube unless I like held it up to show you. So we can't add like links and things like that. But um, we'll we can show. We'll I'll get... bring some next time or something if you. Well, want. And, and we can put them up. So we'll do it. Later. Yeah. So okay. So I got uh, these are really cool pair of shoes I bought today. These were thirteen ninety nine, but they are new. Um, they're new. They've never been worn. The stickers are still on the bottom. Um, they may have been tried on, maybe. But they're a brand that I had never heard of before, made in Italy. So that's what clued me in first. And the name, the brand is called, I'm going to try and get that mark yeah, off the bottom. Yeah, you can see it. It's called Greats. Greats. So if you look up Greats and look at their solds, they're pretty good. So these were, I paid 20% off of $13.99. I'm going to sell, I'm going to list these for about $129. That's and crazy, I think, I'll get, I think I'll get that. That's um, crazy. So I was kind of excited about these. They're leather. They're just nothing special. But this, okay, is, a, so, this is a popular like uh, moccasin slash boat shoe type of thing that's going on right now with the thicker sole. This is very um, kind of like van style. It's very trendy in streetwear and um, like urban look for uh, both men and women. And these are kind of unisex. Okay, so let's because you'd never heard of this brand. So let's talk. Let's talk again real quick. What made you think something was special about these? So made in Italy. Um, that was one. That was the first. That was exactly. That was it. Made that in Italy. It. Uh, made in Italy and the fact that it was European sizing. Anytime I find European sizing or made in Italy, I'm almost always going to just look up the brand. Yeah. doesn't necessarily mean that they're worth a lot, but generally made in Italy, made in Spain, made in Brazil are good, uh, good indicators indicators of quality yeah. uh, shoes or clothing. Also made the U.S. I know that men's dress shoes, uh, there's some, I don't, I don't know a lot about them, but I do know that some men's dress shoes, if you see made in the U.S., a lot of times they, it turns out that they're worth a lot more. So just going to be on the lookout for that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that was a, a cool brand that I loved. These are a pair of shoes that, um, sorry, real quick. Victoria yeah. wants to know what, um, wants to know what size those are. What size are they? I think they like seven or seven and a half. No, I think they're a, a size, um, they're us size eight, but I think it's an eight men's. Those would probably fit me, but you she said that I can't them. have them. 
I'm sorry. That's too high of an ROI. I don't like you that much. She doesn't like me to be fancy. Guys. I already give you all my good stuff. Cut the crap. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this is a pair of shoes that um, Dana will probably uh, like. They're too small for you. They're too small for me too. Uh, but these are uh, these are what are called like bowling shoes, creepers, that kind of thing. These are really big in the whole uh, rockabilly, goth lifestyle, that type of thing. Uh, they look like Doc Martens. They are not Doc Martens, but they are very well made, made in England shoe, very similar to a, mm -hmm. a, a Doc Martens shoe. I actually thought cool. they were Docs when I grabbed them because they were so similar. But they are a brand called Tread Air, T R E D A I R. And these are on the smaller side. Um, but I will, uh, I'm still going to list these for about $79. They were definitely more of a UK seller. So I think I'll probably end up selling these to someone in the UK and they are also a small shoe size. They're not huge. I think this is like a woman's mm -hmm. size. I would, I guess like a woman's size six or woman's size seven. I haven't looked yet. Um, but they're really cool. Yeah. They're like a, a big, heavy bowling shoe. And I paid $10 for these. And like I said, I'm going to sell them for about, I'm thinking I'm going to list them for like 79 yeah uh laura wants to know is there any way to find out when the item sells for when best offer is used yeah i just showed earlier in the video but if you just go to um one way you can do it for free is flippertools.com uh if you know the item number obviously if you see a listing you can know the item number and just put it in there it'll tell you how much it actually sold for and so, uh, so victoria said Harleys that are similar and the flames turn red no no these don't change color i'm like you had me i'm like really do they change color <laughs> no they don't <laughs> Um, let me see. We've got some. Uh, uh, I seriously have a bunch of red wing boots, water resistant. They are on sale for thirty five dollars. Would you buy them um, if you, if you were him? Uh, I for red wings, yeah, I would. Red wings but, are that brand of shoes that they have a lifetime warranty, so that's why people buy them. Yeah, but here's here's the thing, guys. On all on most shoes, especially like the 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 um, the nicer brands, because red wing ones do go for a lot usually they'll say inside somewhere they usually have like a name for like the style like i know polo um, ralph Lauren shoes are like that so usually you can find more information it's not just about the brand because i don't know maybe there's a red wing uh line of shoes that don't do as well that's true they might be so really like make sure you look and see if there's any kind of or there's any kind of like style number because a lot of shoes adidas and nike definitely do but there's a lot of other shoes that have style numbers mm -hmm. and you like plug those into google you can find it because you, you never know because I'm hesitant to tell you to go buy a bunch of shoes for $35 each, even though they are red wind boots. Um, but just try and do some research on them. Um, and then I'll do my last pair of shoes that I'm going to talk about and then you can move to something else. So this is another uh, brand of shoes. These are made, uh, these are European made as well. I'm trying to think of what the name it is. Um, so the name of these, they're called Red or Dead, R-E-D or hmm. D-E-A-D, Red or Dead. This is another one of those type of goth, rockabilly, club wear type of things. They're European. They're super heavy, well-made leather shoes. They don't look anything special. They're just a bigger size for women. They're women size 39, uh, European size 39. So that's a pretty big size. Um, and they're just a really nice leather flat, like a ballet flat. Um, and I paid about $5 for them. So I'm going to list these for about 60 maybe 70 i've got to take a quick look uh, again their their boots sell for a lot more this brand but the the flats are still still nice mm -hmm. they've got a real heavy thick sole they're just well made if you pick up a pair of shoes and they're heavy that's another indicator of good quality um it's like uh, it's like fabrics when you're picking up a, a sweater or a dress or a skirt and it seems well made and heavy and mm -hmm. you know substantial most of the time that works the same way for a shoe you know, if a shoe is heavy and it's good quality, thick leather, it's generally going to be worth more than something that's, you know, a cheapo middle of the range brand. Yeah. So, uh, Dorothy wants to know, do you disclose shape like the flat right there? Go through any trouble. Do you try to fix the shape of it at all? Uh, no, these are a little bit crushed, but I mean, once your foot is in them, they're not, they're yeah. not, you know, they're not too bad. Yeah. But the way she takes her pictures, you can see any flaws. Yeah. I, like I show all the flaws if there are any, I don't, somebody asked if I use a measuring tape on shoes. I don't. Um, you know what size shoe you wear? So, I mean, who doesn't know what size shoe they wear? Sometimes things are going to fit a little bit differently, but I mean, that's why I have free returns. But for the most part, men and women, they know their yeah. shoe size. I, I go by men's sizes and I'm an eight and a half mm -hmm. and I've never had an eight and a half that didn't fit me. Now there are some shoes where I can fit into an eight um, and they fit me okay. And so I know that. And there's other ones where eights are too small for me, but I don't think there's a single eight and a half anywhere that doesn't fit me. Yeah. 
yeah, I mean, I don't, I mean, I disclose flaws, I take good photos, but I don't, I think I've said before, I don't go crazy on cleaning the shoes either. I'm going to give them a quick wipe down and shine them up a little bit and make sure that the leather looks nice where it can, but I'm not scrubbing the yeah. soles. Some people scrub the soles so that they look brand new. Well, they're not brand new. Mm -hmm. People walk on their shoes. I'm not scrubbing them. That's gross. Now, I don't show measurements for my shoes, but if you do want to, um, Sizely, uh, the website that, that sponsors the Boss Up and List show, um, they have really good templates for shoes in case you're wondering like how you should be measuring them. I mean, if you really want to take the time to do that, you can. Um, uh, Trisha said, after coming home and you notice the size of the shoe is rubbed off, do you measure the shoe or just donate it back? Uh, that's occasionally happened like on a boot or something like that. Je not as much on the, on the flat shoes or sneakers or anything like that. You can generally find sizing anywhere. But if it's rubbed off and I'm not positive what size it is, I sometimes I'll try to size it based on my own foot or based on Katie's foot. And then I'll, then I'll, then I will take measurements and I'll go off of a standardized chart and mm -hmm. you can usually get it down to within a half size based on the inse insole, what it, what it measures to. I just Google a standardized chart. Yeah. So it happens. It has happened Very, a few times. So I don't think I've ever had it happen to me, but all right. You want me to show some? Yeah. All right. I got some t-shirts, uh, today. I think this one I found today, this one just kind of a nerdy, uh, E equals F flat. Um, the Einstein theory for musicians. I've also seen it said it's like the musician's theory of relativ relativity or whatever. Uh, anyway, because E is pretty much the same note as an F flat. That's basically what it is. This actually has a date on it of 1999. So just barely not vintage, but also call it vintage because I mean, 19 years, 20 years, who really cares? It's pretty much the same thing. I don't know if I'll be able to sell a lot. I did look this up and there's like a bunch of them that are like, it's a pretty common like saying or whatever. So there's lots of like newer t-shirts that have the same thing on them. So who knows? But when, at the time that I bought it, I was just kind of like, I like stuff like this where it's going to appeal to a very specific crowd of people um, that might want to buy it. So anyway, um, Robin says, did I see Jimmy boy in here? I don't know. I didn't see his uh, Jim, Jim house in the house. Yeah. He's at work. Okay. I think, gotcha. or, or she wouldn't be asking that because she's at home. Mom. So, <laughs> Uh, then I got, um, a kind of Stussy t-shirt, not vintage, but it's in really nice condition. Um, they weren't charging a crazy amount for it at $4.99. So paid $4 for it. I should be able to sell this for like 25 bucks. It's, it's a cool shirt. I haven't seen this particular design. Um, so I think it's kind of cool. Um, but I always pick up Stussy as long as they're overcharging for it. Um, another one, not vintage, but this is a Mercedes Benz, um, research and development t-shirt and it's got the logo on the back. Um, so I always like to pick up stuff like this. That's like, uh, you know, kind of luxury car branding. Mm, something you were I um, bought has house with cats. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I got a fur ball in my throat. This was only priced a dollar 49. So I barely paid anything for that. Um, oh, there he is. Hey, it's Jimmy, Jimmy boy. Um, I also, yeah, Angie, uh, we always try to say what we're going to sell something for. And then when we come back and show our haul, we will tell you what it did sell for. That's kind of the point. Yeah. We want you to learn, um, prices, but also what we paid for it and what we sold, for, sold it for. That's, you know, mm -hmm. most, most of the t-shirts I get, I'm looking to sell for 25 to $30. If it's something really special, then I'll definitely like make a note of that and let you guys know it's going to be a lot more. But for the most part, I pick up t-shirts that I plan to sell for 25 to 30. It's kind of like my target. For just your basic, um, so you wouldn't, wouldn't, you wouldn't pick up a Kia t-shirt. No. Probably not. Probably not. Um, okay. So this is from the other day. Uh, I found this, um, Nike now just to, as a reminder to people who don't know this particular Nike tag, this white with the red swoosh, this is mid to late nineties. So this is vintage nineties. It's not as it's not going to sell for as much as the late eighties, early nineties tag. That's gray, um, with the red. So. Uh, but this has the nice giant swoosh on the back. So that's really good. Um, and it also has Nike, um, spelled out. That's a big on thing the sleeve please. right there. So, I mean, I think I can sell this for about 35, $40. Um, see, I would have said more. Yeah, maybe more, but you know, it's not, it's kind of like a polyester. I don't know. Hey, we'll see. Once I actually list it, I might go for even higher. Um, um, Angie, we didn't go to Goodwill today. We went to Sabres. So, um, every store has a little different sales depending on where you are, but, mm -hmm. um, we did, we just, we got 20% off. Yeah. We had coupons. We had the coupons. Um, here's a vintage nineties Reebok jacket. And this is a uh, really cool, just a windbreaker. Uh, but I like that it has the logo on it. And then on the back, it has the logo really big. And then my favorite part is it actually has on both the sleeves. 
it has the logos all the way down the sleeve. Um, and I really like this. Uh, this one um, I paid, well, it's $10.99, so 20% off of that. And I should be able to sell this for about 40 bucks. So, all right, you wanna go ahead? Sure. So I didn't actually source a ton of hard goods this, this week. I did a lot of um, clothes and shoes, but I didn't get a lot of uh, hard goods. So I do have a couple of things that I'm gonna show that are hard goods. And then my last batch of things will be clothing. But this is one thing I picked up. I'm always looking in housewares, always, always, always looking in housewares. So any of those uh, as seen on TV, hair things, the Instyler, the Revo, this type of thing. First of all, don't ever spend money and buy one because first thing it's gonna do is rip your hair out of your freaking head especially if you have thick hair this whole thing is supposed to be for people that have long hair and it's curly and you want to blow dry it and and it's going to motorize thing to make it straight and pr pretty the way that when you get a blowout at the salon it makes me think of that stephen king movie maximum overdrive which is pretty much the worst movie ever but the machines come alive and they pretty much kill you so yeah so from someone who has or used to have long hair but has super thick curly hair and tried one of these things let me just tell you it rips your freaking hair out of your head don't buy one but i'm happy to sell it to you on ebay so i paid um i paid eight dollars for this and this this tends to find um this tends to sell for about 80 um even used nice so it's dorothy know. wants to find a flow in the wild or what What was it called dorothy i got a flow bee on um <laughs> at a garage sale last year i paid five dollars uh or um what was it on wayne's world the suck cut oh, in the wayne's world movie yeah. yeah yeah uh so a couple of things um somebody was asking who was oh, so let me go back up really mm -hmm. quick deb smith once said that she noticed that in my ebay store i have a bunch of diamond supply company t-shirts um, any special information on those shirts okay here's the thing about diamond supply company um it is i would call it a, a mid-level streetwear brand um it probably was more popular uh like maybe five six years ago um it still sells a little bit it's not great for the most part i'm kind of over it um i will pick them up if it's super cheap like we went when we went to san diego a few months back uh we went to this cool thrift store that had tons of t-shirts and i found like five different um diamond supply company t-shirts that were new with tags and they were like what three xl t-shirts yeah um, and so i got all those, all those and i sold all, i think i sold all maybe i have one left um i found some really good hoodies that were like in great condition that still sold for a good amount they still sell not for a crazy amount it depends on the the graphics on the front of them I'm not going to say that they're home runs at all. Um, you just kind of got to feel it out. If you can get them for a buck, I mean, you're going to be able to sell them probably for 20 um, and then, or more depending on what it is, but I'm not going to necessarily like advise people to get them. Uh, it's not like a bolo brand. I don't no. consider something that sells for 15 or $20 a bolo. I don't care what you pay for it. Yeah. No, but free or a buck or so that's great. Yeah. It just depends. Um, and then somebody else said something. Oh, I think Karen said that I found a lot of uh, Stussy. Yeah. Stussy. I never found, I think I found one Stussy shirt ever the whole time I was thrifting and selling in Oregon. Um, but in California and Vegas, you find it a lot more. Um, so, cause it's just kind of some of those streetwear brands are just more popular here. So anyway, all right, go ahead. Um, someone asked, I thrifted a no, no, almost complete minus the CD manual for seven ninety nine. Has anyone ever sold one? Yeah, I have. I have, uh, I think I sold mine for close to a hundred dollars and it was like a generation two or something like that. When you look them up, there are different versions, but mine was pretty old. Mm. I found it on, uh, in the bag wall at Savers last year and it sold for about a hundred dollars. So yeah, totally sell it. Interesting. And basically the no, no is that hair removal thing. And again, it's another, as seen on TV, it's an infomercial type thing. Um, I love infomercial stuff. So I, I, I have a problem. I want to buy she it. Does. All for I, for Christmas, for Christmas guys, I got her the clapper, uh, our light in the, like our, our lamp in the bedroom, um, is a clapper. So every morning or every, <laughs> no, not the morning, every night we use it a couple of times. Yeah. I love it. It's on my nightstand because here's the thing. So the lamp on the nightstand, I have a tall nightstand, right? So, and then the lamp is even taller. So you you're like halfway asleep, almost asleep. And then you've got to practically lift yourself all the way out of bed to turn off the lamp uh, on the nightstand. So I'm like, every time it wakes me all, all the way. So now I just clap. Sometimes she has trouble clapping guys. I don't know what the deal is, but sometimes I'll hear her and I'll hear her and I'll be like, what? That was, first of all, that was three claps. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> uh but um oh somebody said lauren said i've passed on champions um sweats the past only because they're so plain simple and bird see on the chest still pick up um you know, like, it's first here's the thing it's it's hard it's hard for me to just tell you that 
without seeing what it is specifically you're looking at. So let me give you the rule of thumb. If it says made in the US, absolutely pick it up. Absolutely pick it up. Um, and then if it's uh, reverse weave, for sure pick it up. Some of the made in Mexico are going to be like late 90s. So, but I, yes, if it's if you're getting it for a good price. That sounds fair. Yeah. Um, if you uh, answer the quick question about the listing challenge, Angie asks, um, what is the listing challenge you all have on, in the boss group? So basically every Wednesday in, in the boss Facebook group, we talk about um, a boss up and list. That's kind of our day that we talk about all day that we both tend to list all day but it's just our uh, like a thread of it's a virtual listing it's a virtual party, listing party. Yeah. i try to get you uh motivated to list maybe list a, a pile a death pile that you've been ignoring for a mm -hmm. couple months or whatever it's just it's more of a virtual listing party where it's a support thread where we talk about how many we're going to try and get done for yeah. the day and that's it and then you know then there's also the daily thread that katie puts up which is the two or two mm -hmm. or two and two two or two um, which is basically uh, a challenge to either list two brand new items every single day or end your oldest listings, rework them, use cell similar and create a new listing, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe better pictures, title, yeah. better prices, whatever. It's just something to get you into the daily habit of being in your mm -hmm. store and doing something new every day because an active store is a happy store right. uh, as, as far as the Facebook and as far as the eBay algorithms go. Um, when you're listing or active in your store, you're going to sell more. And basically, if it gets you motivated to get yourself into a habit to list two new items every day, chances are you're going to do more yeah. than two. And that's very so. eBay centric. Um, and the two of us don't really have a problem mm -hmm. with our listing. We're really good at like listing every single day. So I've kind of taken that whole two or two challenge and like, well, I know I'm going to list on eBay. I'm forcing myself to do at least a couple listings every single day on Etsy so that I make sure that I'm staying um, active. But yeah, and as far as the Wednesday thing goes, like first thing in the morning, I put up a post um for the boss of the list uh, virtual listing um challenge and it's like people put down what their goals are for the day and then at 11 a.m pacific standard time um that's the boss of the list live show so it's like everybody can kind of take a break but yeah it really is just about staying motivated so if you're not in the boss facebook group please come join us because it's all about motivating and keeping us going and a lot of people have been uh, reporting back that because of those listing challenges they've been regularly listing more than they were in the past and they're really seeing the results in their sales. Nice. So, all right, go ahead. All right, so I've got one more hard good thing that I'm gonna talk about. So generally speaking, most uh, Disney stuff tends to be really overpriced at um, at Goodwill or at, um, you know, Savers or whatever. So I got this cute thing and I have, I have a feeling that whoever priced it just didn't realize that it was a Disney figurine. Mm -hmm. So this is the big bad wolf. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf, the big bad wolf. Yes, him. <laughs> uh, so I paid 20% uh, off of $6.99. has a little Disney sticker underneath this. Uh, but anyway, this particular one seems to be selling pretty steadily for like $60 to $80. That's really so, cool. I love it. Um, I grabbed it. Uh, I didn't even look it up till I got it home. But I grabbed it because it's not a common one. You don't see the big bad wolf mm -hmm. everywhere. So when I see Disney and it's not uh, Mickey, and it's you know or something super common i tend to grab it or frozen which is so overdone well it wasn't but, that like a short yeah so it's like one of those ones that like certain you know like i know when i grew up there that was one of the shorts that i saw a lot and then the other one was you guys remember lambert the sheepish lion you remember lambert yes you asked lambert me the sheepish lion lambert he's always trying to be a wild and woolly sheep lambert the sheepish lion but see, like yeah. you find cool stuff like that, and it's like so specific. It's yeah. not like Mickey Mouse or whatever. Um, anyway, somebody had uh, bu, 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 bu. somebody was asking, "How do you determine?" Oh, it was Beth. How do you determine what the oldest listing is? In eBay, when you are on, on your listing page, um, where it shows all of your listings, there's different ways that you can sort your listings, and you can actually click on the date that they were they, they were created, um, and you click on that, and it'll sort them oldest to newest or newest to oldest. And you can actually see it and it'll tell you like right now my oldest i think or i think i'm still in march of 2017 for my oldest one so i got some work to do because i really want to get to where i don't have anything that's older than three months um so you can do that anyway um is it my turn yeah your turn okay so you guys might remember a couple of weeks ago i had thrifted this really cool um vintage uh, Harley Davidson tank top and the brand that it came out, it wasn't a 3d emblem, which is like one of the most sought after ones, but it was a speed limit 70. And I found that some of those, there aren't a lot of them out there, but some of them have sold for a lot. And it was actually hard to kind of find a lot of information about it. But when I was working on listing it, um, I went into a search to kind of look at comps and somebody had just listed this one. 
And this one, the one I had, I thought was, I was pretty sure was new without tags. It was dead stock. It was definitely had never been washed or worn. Um, this one actually has the tag still attached. Um, and again, it's the 70 um, speed limit brand. And I think this one is actually an even better um, graphic than the one I had. I love that it has like the old school um, Harley Davidson uh, bikes. And the other one that I had was from 1991. And this one's actually from 1988. So you can see that's a 1988. Um, they had it listed for $30. And it was newly listed. It had just been listed. He grabbed it. Fast. And so I went ahead and I bought it right away um, because I really think, uh, you know, again, there weren't a lot of comps on these, but I personally, I just think I can sell it for like a hundred bucks. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed it. I'm going to sell this bad boy for a hundred. You just watch and see. Um, I'll get this listed on eBay and on Etsy. And I swear it's going to happen. It's right. going to happen, guys. You I mark my you. words. I believe you. Um, now we're going to go to uh, the stuff that I got from um allison big drift thrift i got a couple of cool t-shirts that i really liked this one's pretty funny this is from 1989 um and it says screen uh, stars yeah screen stars this one says so who uh who shit in your cornflakes guys that's what it says i think it's pretty silly it's funny this will sell i can totally sell this for like 30 bucks i think we'll see um ridiculous i think that's funny and then the other one I really liked that she sent me uh, is this one. This is the 90s, made in the U.S., Hanes BPT. Um, this tag. And I, I really like these kinds. This is a U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, Alaska. And, again, these ones you'll see. Uh, I talk about these um, in my unboxing video. But I just kind of want to show a couple of the highlights in the live show. Mm -hmm. um, no, why don't you go ahead? Okay. So uh, Katie actually occasionally, just like I do with her, she will find things for me when she's done looking at the racks herself because she's usually done faster than I am because I shop every category. Actually, I found this while I was looking for stuff. Yeah. There's so, just certain things where I'm like, it's not super exciting to me, but I know it has value and I know that it'll help her. And she's not going to be thrifting sourcing for in the next couple of weeks. Right. I'm so, going to be gone. So I need to have some stuff so for, uh, to get listed while I'm gone. So this is uh, Vineyard Vines. This is a brand, I don't know if I've talked about it before, but it's definitely been talked about before. It's a little bit on its decline as far as popularity. It was a little more popular a year or two ago. Um, it's it's just, uh, it's got the cute little whale on it. But this is a cool little uh, performance sweatshirt. So it's like thin, it's got like that moisture wicking, like people that are like jogging or whatever. Would be I love this. the way it feels. It's really nice. So it was, it's $8 is what I paid for it. I'm gonna sell it for about 60. So, and it's got the real big logo on the back, which is exactly, which is real nice. Um, I'm just going to keep going because I only have three more things. Okay. Uh, and we're already over. We're over time. Yeah. But so, tell us, guys, do you care? Do you mind? Like, do you mind? That we're do you mind? Time? Past three o'clock. Okay. So I also grabbed this today as well. This is a size four uh, dress. But what it is, it is it a is vintage Betsy Johnson. So not super old Betsy Johnson, what but year? it's, uh, I, I really don't know. I'm going to take a look like at it. It's probably like early 2000s. So oh, almost, okay. almost vintage. Um, I got to double check the logo on that. But this is off the top of my head. Uh, but in any case, it's not the newer Betsy Johnson, which is the logo is black and hot pink. And then black and hot pink logo is her lower end, like Betsy Johnson. It, you can buy the bags. You find it a lot at TJ Maxx or even at Ross and stuff like that. So this is one of her designer dresses. So I paid about ten dollars for this. I'm gonna list it and sell it for about a hundred. Well, the it's whole a smaller like, size, but it's nice. The whole like kind of rose gold kind of rose color gold is, is super popular. Right if you now. follow me on face on Instagram, I was joking because I had my nails done yesterday. I have a rose gold paint on them, and my yeah. and my uh, my engagement ring is rose gold. And rose gold is supposedly super bougie and uh, very um, you know white girl basic now. So I was like, does this make me basic? Anyway, I thought I was being funny. Yeah, it does. My daughter didn't find it amazing. <laughs> she said I was too old. Shut up. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right. So let me see. This is another one that I picked up that I did not know about. This is like this real cute um, summer sundress. Um, I've never seen this brand before. I just grabbed it because I thought it was really cool. It's one of these like convertible sundresses. You can roll it down and make it a big skirt or, or what have you. Um, it's a size one, which was a little bit strange for me, but the brand is called Erica Tanov, E-R-I-C-A. The last name is T-A-N-O-V, Tanov. 
So um, I had never heard of the brand and it's kind of hard for me to show you the label because it's a white on white satin label. So you're not really going to see it. So that's why I spelled it out for mm -hmm. you. But I paid $4 and 50 cents. I'm going to list this for well over a hundred dollars. Um, and if you look at sold by this person and, or even current listeds, super high. I've got, and I just did a quick search. I've got to do a little bit more research. So I'm pretty excited about that one. That was a good find. <laughs> Angie says we got a hundred thumbs up. Can we get another hour? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've got, let's see. Um, this was a good find that I found yesterday when I was out, uh, while, while Katie was hiking. This is the one I'm super jealous of. I found a super awesome underpriced thank you for once savers um Patagonia outdoor jacket. It's a men's jacket. It is a large, it's black. It's got that Gore-Tex, uh, it's a lightweight Gore-Tex um lined, but like it's a, mm -hmm. a ski jacket, whatever, waterproof. It's got the hood attached and all that stuff. So I paid eight dollars. That's crazy for a Patagonia jacket. I think I'm going to list it for about 150. The only the only problem with it is that inside someone cut out the label that had the style number on it. So I've been searching and searching to try and mm. find the style because uh, something Patagonia has so many different jackets. If you can figure out the style number so that you know what to call it, that makes a big difference. Right. So I, I'm about halfway through looking, trying to figure out which which one it is. But I know it's men's. I know it's Patagonia. Well, it's a really nice jacket. It's a lined. It's a lightweight one. But yeah. if you guys aren't buying Patagonia, you need to pick it up. Yeah, and I mean, and it's and it stays. It's held its value pretty well. Yeah. I mean, it's not quite as popular. Again, it's one of those about a year ago it was way more popular mm -hmm. um, with like the college kids and the outdoorsy people. But it's actually a, a still a really great brand. Mm -hmm. And Patagonia fleeces are really good. Yeah, fleeces always sell. Mm -hmm. I've never had one that I've held on to, especially so. vintage. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, so I that's it for me. That's all I got. And then I have three sweatshirts that came in the uh, the box of goodies that um, Allison sent. And I'll show real quick. Actually, I had just two. It's just that I have two of the same size. Um, but one of them is this, this is the one I have two, and they're new with tags. And this one says, "If you can't hunt with the big dogs, stay on the porch." So it's just like you know, kind of a silly hunting uh, sweatshirt. But I can totally sell these for like thirty bucks. That's for cute. sure. I say that's I got two of them. I love them. And then my favorite, this is my favorite one. I like stuffs like this. This is a air adventures, Alaskan air charters uh, from Kenai, Alaska. And I just love the graphic on the front of it. I love that plane. I just think it looks super cool. You can see the big dipper or whatever in the background there. Um, this is a uh, nineties made in the U S jerseys XL. Again, I think I can sell, I think this one I could probably sell for like 35 bucks. I was going to say 35, 40. Yeah. yeah that's going to be my, and any of this stuff, the way I'm, I'm doing things now, as far as listing goes, um, all of my vintage stuff, I listed on eBay and then I immediately cross post it onto Etsy. And then I'm going back, um, through old, uh, eBay listings and adding those to Etsy as well. But I think I'm up to, uh, let me see what, how many listings I'm up to right now. Um, I am now, I have active listings. I am up to 73. I think I had like, I think I only had like about 40 when I started going again. So well, you've only been doing it for like a week. So yeah, only a week. And, I, and I'm not, you know, I'm not doing like 20 listings a day. Are you sharing your screen now? No, I'm not sharing okay, my screen. So you just disappeared for people. No, I didn't. They could see me. They could oh. see us. We just couldn't see ourselves. <laughs> I'm new to this YouTube stuff. Yeah, but anyway, um, so I, you know, I'm, I'm making sure I'm listing at least two things. Sometimes I'm doing more like four or five, but I'm not going crazy on the Etsy, but just steadily going to build myself up. And as you can see, I got that $80 sale this week, so that's awesome. So Chuck Dunn asks, do you all do free shipping on your clothing? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We both do um, free shipping. She does free shipping on everything, almost everything, I think, if not everything. I do free shipping on everything on eBay. Now, Etsy, I have a charge shipping. Okay. Um, on Etsy, which I have not started cross posting, but I do still have some listings up on Etsy. Basically what I do is I do free shipping on Etsy as well, but I raise my price on every item $10 more than what it is on eBay. Mm -hmm. Um, because stuff tends to sell for a little bit more on Etsy. Yep. Uh, so. James wants to know when I started Etsy, uh, I 
started, I think at the beginning of 2017 is when I started listing there. And I was, I was super active on it for maybe like, I don't know, like a month or something like that. I got up to almost a hundred listings, between 80 and a hundred listings. And right away I started getting like regular sales every week. Um, I wasn't, I never got to like daily sales, but I would have at least a couple of sales every single week. And then I just stopped doing it. Cause I just kind of, I was so focused on, on eBay. One of the reasons why I stopped doing it is because, um, I really wanted my Etsy store to be like super nice. Cause it's like eBay I had started and I, when I started, I was putting everything up there I had bad listings, blah, 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 all this stuff. Etsy, I wanted it to be super nice. And so I was actually taking the time on my main photo to go in and edit out the background. So like how it was super crisp and white and perfect. The problem was I was making it so it was more work for me. And so then I wasn't as motivated to do it. And so this time around, I'm like, screw it. My pictures are good enough. I have really good pictures. They're better than most people's. Who cares if it's not totally perfectly white, the background. And that way it's just easier for me to do it and it's faster. So, so Jimmy asked, uh, he heard Etsy raise their fees. Is that true? Honestly, I haven't sold anything on Etsy in a few months. So you're at, you're barking up the wrong tree and she just, just sold her first item in the past few months. So I'm not sure. Uh, well, I mean, I, I sold a t-shirt like a week. I, I need to go and look, I will say it cost me 20 cents every time I list something. That's so it does cost that hasn't changed. Yeah. Um, it's 20 cents a listing, but it lasts for four months or three months. Or yeah. Like it lasts that. for a few months. Uh, and then, um, I'm not sure what the fees are. I need to go and look again, but exactly what the listing fees are but i'm not really that concerned about it so I'm still yeah money. But as soon as we get back from open i'm going to be um devoting a little bit more time or maybe dana will be devoting more time to getting my stuff cross-listed on etsy so i'm looking to do that um mm -hmm. uh carrie is it you know cammy cammy james says you guys are a breath of fresh air it seems like there's so much negativity on other channels uh it's great to watch you guys good solid advice i think you know people in general have a tendency sometimes to kind of like go you know feel like look at things negatively here's the thing when things go wrong in your life it is easier in the moment to put it all externally and talk about think about what somebody else is doing what's what these outside forces are that are causing things to go wrong for you or causing things to be difficult it's just easier in the moment but the reality also, is it's human nature it is human nature well that's what i'm saying it's human yeah. nature because it's, it's just easier it's it's like you don't have to like take on that the, that blame or the responsibility for it mm -hmm. but what's it's not easier in the long run because what happens is that you're not doing anything about it and so that's kind of like the whole boss up um, ideology is it's like, you know, bossing up is about taking control of your own life, taking responsibility for your own success. And instead of focusing on like, okay, this um, platform is raising fees or these rules are changing or this is happening. It's about looking at everything as even if it's a challenge, looking at every challenge as an opportunity for growth. And so looking for ways that you can uh, meet that head on ways that you need to adapt yourself ways, you know, maybe like the reason your sales aren't the best is because you could be making changes. Like, yeah, there could be things going on at eBay right now that are causing your sales to go down, but are there things you could be doing to improve your own listings? Could you be doing better pictures? Could you be doing free shipping? Could you be doing free returns? Could you uh, be doing returns to all? Cause I know there's some people who don't do returns. Could Let's you be doing proactive. your own? Yeah. Could you be doing your own international shipping? And maybe you're not doing that right now. Maybe you're doing global shipping program and you could be doing your own and saving buyers money on shipping fees. There's all kinds of things you can be doing proactively. And for me right now, I'm doing more stuff on Etsy. So it's like, I love eBay, but I'm going to do what I can to bring in more funds Generate in other ways. So yeah. yeah, that's kind of where I'm coming from with it. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like that with, with anything in life, you can focus on the negative because let's face it, there's always something negative going on in everybody's life. Everybody's got crap, whether your parents are aging or somebody died or somebody's got health issues or your kid's a brat or you're trying you know, raise teenagers. Cause if you've ever been there, let me tell you, it's no picnic. Um, any of those things, or your job is hurting, or you've got bills to pay. Everybody's got bills to pay. Everybody has issues in their lives. Everybody has drama, if you want to call it drama. Um, but it, if you focus on that and you focus on that negativity, all you're going to do is breed more negativity. Negativity breeds negativity, whether it's different, it's people talking or, or gossiping or um, being ugly toward one another. Negativity breeds negativity. And we're all guilty of it. Every single person is. Mm -hmm. we, all, we all do it. We've all fed into it. Um, whether it's, you know, with family members or you bicker with somebody, we've all done it. Nobody is without fault. 
But I have found that getting away from that and being away from people that are negative and surrounding myself with positive people, Katie being one of them, because this is what you see is what you get. She is a very upbeat, positive and happy person. And she has definitely brought out that side in me a little bit more because I tend to be one of those people that, you know, folk not focuses on the negative, but I tend to be one of those people that like overthinks things. You right? think about, so I think stress. about like your, your gut reaction to things. And so like her gut reaction when something happens is generally to be like, to look at worst case scenario. Right. Or, and that's just in a split moment. That doesn't mean that like, if she like thinks about it for a couple hours, then she'll calm down and right. she'll be able to see. My like, gut reaction is to overreact most right. of the time. And my gut reaction is to be like, okay, how do we solve this? Or, okay, what can we do? Or, okay, how can I use this to my benefit or whatever? You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm really fortunate that in other aspects of my life, I have some amazing friends and people in my life that have overcome some enormous uh, adversity. I mean, more so than any, any, most people that I know could ever do. And they inspire me every day. And that's part of why I work within the burn community uh, with burn survivors, because they're some of the most inspirational people that I know. And I'm very blessed to have those people in my life because whenever I think about how bad my day is, I think about a friend of mine that has one arm and one eye and is one of the happiest, most uh, positive people that I know. So my life is not that bad. I get to sit in traffic for 10 minutes or I've got to stand behind somebody for 10 minutes at Starbucks and my whole day's shot. My life is not that bad. So mm-hmm. I, I, I like to do the things that I do to work outside of myself and work with people that make me think outside of myself so that it, it centers me, it grounds me. A couple of times a year, I go away and do things with other people that um, are maybe considered less fortunate than I am. Um, I don't consider it that way. I consider I'm the fortunate one because I get to go and spend time with these people that make me feel amazing. And it's, it's my reality check. Mm. So Absolutely. I don't know. I, I just rambled that time. Sorry. <laughs> hey, the thing is though, we're both really passionate about how we feel about this stuff. So and I think that comes across um, real quick to go back to the whole cross listing thing. Karen wants to know how dangerous is cross listing for eBay to Etsy. Here's the thing. You are completely allowed to cross post. You can cross list on all kinds of different platforms, but you do need to understand that um, different platforms are going to have different consequences if you accidentally sell two things at the same place. So you need to be extra, extra careful. The second something sells on one platform, you need to go take it down from the other platforms and understand that eBay, for instance, does, um, you will get a, uh, a defect if you cancel a sale. Um, and so like, for instance, you know, I'm really good about making sure I take stuff down, but let's, I've never had, let's say, let's say in the middle of the day, let's say I'm sleeping and for some random reason, somebody buys something on eBay and two minutes later they buy something on Etsy. Somebody else buys the same thing on Etsy and I wake up the next morning and it's sold in both places. The reality is I'm going to cancel my sale on Etsy because I don't want the defect in eBay. eBay is where I make the majority of my money. eBay is the one that has pretty strict consequences. You get too many defects and you can get um, your, you, I mean, you can get your whole account shut down or you can get um, suspended for a while. So you do need to be aware of that, but you're not breaking any rules by cross posting. You just need to make sure that you're organized and you're paying attention. The second you sell something, you take it down everywhere else. Yeah. So. I, I haven't had it happen yet where I've sold it on both platforms where I have forgotten to take something down. So I've been pretty fortunate. I haven't, I haven't had it happen and I do cross post too. So, um, again, it's not very many things. I, I literally have not listed anything new on Etsy in like 18 months. So yeah. Yeah. yeah all right. Wow. And we are at like almost three 30 now, you guys, and we still have like 130 people watching us. So well, I guess we're not that boring. Yeah, I guess not. But, uh, Hey, we really appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with us. Here's the thing, guys, I wanted to bring up, um, please, if you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to it. And also I wanted to ask you guys, I've never asked you guys this before, but, um, I'm really trying to, I'm hoping to get to 3000 subscribers by eBay open. That's mm-hmm. kind of like my goal. Actually, my goal used to be a thousand. And then I like kind of blew past that. And now it looks like I could possibly get to 3000 by eBay open, which is in a couple of weeks. Um, I think that would be really cool. So I was just going to ask you guys, uh, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And if you know anybody who you think might enjoy um, our show and might enjoy the, the content that we put out, um, if you go, go ahead and share the channel with them or share one of the shows and maybe they'll like it and they'll subscribe too. That'd be really cool. Um, I think it'd be awesome if, if I hit 3000 by eBay open. So that's kind of like my little goal. Got so. two weeks to make it happen. Yeah. I think it's possible. I think it's doable. So um, if you guys could help me out with that, that'd be really cool. And uh, as I said earlier, join the Boss Facebook group if you're not already there. We do lots of cool stuff there. We have fun. And uh, Cammy says that we're like Sunny and Cher. Just don't ever break up. LOL. So which is which? 
Which um, one of us should never go skiing? If I could turn back time. Oh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, uh, thanks, guys. And uh, we're going to get back to hopefully getting some work done today. And uh, I don't know. We were thinking about going swimming. It's pretty hot. Um, but anyway, we'll see you around. And thanks for watching. And this time, I'll try not to stop the video before you get a chance to say goodbye. So Seriously, she's always like, and boss up. And, she, and I'm like, bye. She cuts me off every time. Like, I'm not even here. <laughs> well, the thing is, I don't know because you hit, you hit stop broadcast. And for a while, I thought maybe because when you start it, there's like this delay and I'm not really sure. It's like you don't really know exactly when the delay is. But when you hit stop, I always thought there was a little bit of a delay. But I think it stops like the second you hit stop. So I hit stop and then there's she's a delay like, to start, not a delay And then to she's stop. like waving to herself. Yes, so. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, the Facebook group is called Boss Up. Yeah. No, no, no. The Facebook group oh, is called Boss. Boss. Boss Up is kind of our, our, our thing. like little tagline or whatever. But just go in the description of this video and you'll see um, the link for the Boss group. And the last question, Armando, the last question I'm going to take, Armando said, uh, my final question, do you sell electronics? And I think actually Jimmy answered that. Katie does not, but yes, I do. I sell yes. a little bit of everything. Yeah. So. All right, guys. So seriously, go out, join the Boss Facebook group and Boss Up Q Wave now. Bye. Have a nice week. <laughs>